and I am going to, and we are live, I believe. Let me just check. Oh, I guess we, yeah. I'm kind of watching it on my on my phone here too, but there is a delay. So I think we are live. Uh, yes, we are live. All right, great. Um, welcome everybody. This is David Gilmore, known as LDS Prepper, and it is my honor to have Andrew here this evening for the second time uh, with uh, EMP Shield. He is very gracious in taking his time this evening. It has been an extremely busy day at EMP Shield. Uh, why don't you just tell, uh, you just mentioned that to me a, a minute ago. Tell me what's going on and what why uh, that's happening at EMP Shield. Yeah, uh, so I'm sure a, a lot of people that are watching are aware, but, um, you know, currently Russia is invading Ukraine. And um, unfortunately, uh, yeah, Mr. Putin uh, announced um, several hours ago that there'd be consequences never seen in history should certain um, uh, people get involved in certain ways that he doesn't like. And uh, a statement like that really does, um, it, it, it kind of wakes some people up and re they realize that he might mean what he's saying. And um, many of us are aware that he's recently tested hypersonic weapons. They do have super EMP capabilities. Um, and between the conflict that's going on and that, um, a lot of people are getting prepared right now. Um, as I do believe they should be, if they weren't already, it, it's a very good time. Um, it's never too late. And um, so, yeah, it's good. We've been very busy, um, very, very busy. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to be able to get protection out to so many people. It is important. It's a product that I own, I believe in. Um, I, I, I did a video on me installing the EMP shield on my truck. Did a video on me installing, uh, having it installed by a professional here uh, on my solar system and my home system. I'll be doing a video of me installing it on my uh, car and on my ham radio. Um, it's it's one of the it's money well spent as an investment. I really believe um, that the day will come where I will thank my stars for that. And we have several testimonials of people who've already experienced uh, over 1.2 million dollars in equipment being saved by uh, having the EMP shield installed before the event happened. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're gonna dive right into this. We have a lot of information here tonight, a lot of questions. Um, thank you everybody for being here this evening. If you'll just mention in the chat um, where you're from, just you know, a city, state, country, that would be great. I have limited, uh, the chat usually explodes, so I have limited only subscribers to my channel in the chat. So if you're if you're able to chat, that's because you're subscribed. And if you're and if you're not uh, able to chat, then uh, you need to su subscribe. So let's go through that. And let me get my uh, screen shared here. All right. So everybody, sh we should be over here in the corner. I'm just going to put us down here in the lower right hand corner. Hopefully everybody can see us down there. And I need to hide my screen. All right, so uh, here we are this evening and uh, we are giving away, we, meaning Andrew, okay? And his team there is giving away three EMP shields of your choice. We'll go into details on that right now. So let me, uh, here we go. All right, it's a very simple two-step process. I'm gonna explain the first step, and then Andrew will explain the second step. Um, there may be, there probably are, Andrew, a lot of people who are not familiar with what EMP Shield does. And, you know, I just kind of make this assumption that everyone's been following me right. uh, and uh, knows your product, but that isn't the case. So um, before we get carried away here, I, I should have thought about this earlier. Let's explain to them uh, briefly, what uh, an EMP is or a, a HEMP, why we want to get protected, and, and not necessarily the technology, but that there is a solution, and it is with the EMP shield. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and get you back up here. Let's see, can I get you? No. Um, 
hit C, stop share. And okay, so Andrew, I apologize. Uh, go ahead and please explain to everybody why this is a uh, why why you're so busy today because this is actually touching real lives today. Yes, sir. And I'll, I'll give the Reader's Digest version uh, today. I won't go too long winded, but EMP stands for electromagnetic pulse. And what it is, is it's actually a weapon that can be used against the United States from our adversaries. Um, today, the, a good example would be Russia, who is um, already making threats against our country should we um, you know, become involved with what they're currently doing over there. And so the way EMP works is it's actually created by a nuclear weapon going off in the atmosphere. The term for that is hemp or high altitude nuclear EMP. And what, what that does is that nuclear weapon actually creates three phases of energy that's induced into everything at the ground level of the earth. Um, the first two phases is created by the blast going downwards. And it's it, both phases at roughly 50,000 volts per square meter, which is an incredible amount of uh, energy that's going to destroy pretty much anything with microelectronics that includes transistors, resistors, diodes, microprocessors, and anything with silicon arsenide. Uh, the first phase is very fast in the nanoseconds. The second phase is in the microseconds. And then the third phase of an EMP, um, should portions of the grid have survived the first two, uh, the E3, the third phase, is what's going to basically destroy the remainder of the grid. And that's created from the blast going out into space and causing the magnetosphere to fluctuate. And it's going to do this for many hours, and it's going to create a low and slow charge at the ground level of the Earth. Because the grid's so long, a mile, 10 miles, hundreds of miles, the grid is inducing this low and slow charge over time. And eventually it's building up so much charge that the remaining portions of the grid, like transformers and portions of substations are then eventually destroyed to include our, our power facilities. And that's a basic overview, um, something to kind of highlight. And this isn't to scare people, but it is to be ready to be prepared or start preparing now is that the Department of Homeland Security does project that roughly 90% of the population will be dead within one year post EMP. And that's primarily due to uh, a lack of clean running water, sewer, a lack of supply. Uh, there's no more logistics, there's no more transportation. There's no more communications, there's no more internet. We've basically gone back to the 1800s. Um, and in our current state of the world and, and um, issues going on overseas right now and threats being made against our country, it is very important to prepare against this because this is the weapon of the future. Energy weapons are going to become and we, we really hope that this never does occur, but it, it can become a weapon that is highly uh, devastating to a country. One, because it doesn't kill you immediately, it kills you over time. So it's almost more favorable to use in some people's minds. And two, because it's able to reach, as you can see on the screen here, it's able to reach a very large portion. In fact, at, at a roughly 300 miles above the earth, it will encompass the entire United States, portions of uh, Canada and portions of um, Mexico and down south. So that's a basic overview. What's the solution? Yeah, so we do have a solution. Um, my, my company is called EMP Shield, and we actually have a military certified um, application that will protect uh, pretty much any electrical system and everything that's connected to it. As an example, we have a vehicle model that will protect your vehicle. Uh, so EMP is going to destroy the majority of modern day vehicles on the road. With EMP Shield, you will still be able to use your vehicle after an EMP. Uh, we also have applications for your home and everything connected to your home, generators, solar systems, and uh, about 42 models currently. Um, so there's pretty much a device for pretty much any uh, application that you may have. Okay, and we will be talking about that and real uh, life experiences with the people who have that. Okay, so we are giving away some EMP Shields. It, it's uh, you, you've already given away over 10,000, I think it's 11,000 EMP uh, protection devices already. And uh, we're glad that you have uh, selected us to be part of that uh, uh, giveaway. So first thing is, is you need to subscribe to my LDS Prepper YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, it's very easy to do. All you need to do is come to, uh, you actually can go to ldsprepper.com I bought that domain, so it makes it easy for people to, to come to my YouTube channel. So come to my YouTube channel, and then you're going to see a subscription over here on the right-hand side, and it's going to de default to personalized. You don't want that. You want to make sure that you select all. Otherwise, you will not be getting notifications. 
And so when, once you've done that, uh, it should say subscribed and the black bell should be showing, not the clear or, or white bell. So make sure that happens and you will be notified. I have over 572 emergency preparedness videos on my YouTube channel. This is my mission. My calling is to help people get prepared. I've been doing it almost nonstop for 11 years now. My whole heart and soul is into this. I, you know, I sincerely don't want to be the last man standing. Okay. I want to have as many people standing as possible and thriving. So please subscribe. There's uh, everything uh, uh, regarding water purification, uh, off grid living, how to grow food as if your life depends on it, how to store food, how to protect yourself, uh, uh, solar energy, and so forth. Okay, so that's the first step. Subscribe to LDS Prepper. Make sure you get the black belt selected. The second step, I'm going to have Andrew explain because he knows more about it than I do, but I got a couple graphics here. You want to uh, go over to empshield.com slash giveaway. And when you go, it's at the top of the page here. When you go over to empshield.com slash giveaway, you're going to see a page that looks exactly like this because this is a screenshot. And you're going to want, want to read that and then scroll down to the bottom section. And then there's a, a, a field here where you fill it out. And that's all I know. Take it from there, Andrew. What else can they do to get multiple entries into the contest? Absolutely. So after you've uh, signed up with your name and your email, and the email is important, make sure you give an email that you use quite often because that's how we're going to communicate with you if, you're, if you win. And then once you've done that, you're going to see basically a list of different options, which will include subscribe to LDS Prepper. That'll give you an extra entry. Um, there'll be a few other supporters of the giveaway in their YouTube channels. And if they're a channel that you do want to support, you can subscribe to them as well by clicking the button there. That will give you more entries. There's also a feature where if you share the giveaway, you can share via email, text message on social media. And if any of your friends join the giveaway from your sharing it, you will get entries for every friend that joins. So you could potentially Holy get, cow. you could get hundreds of entries if you have hundreds of friends join. And, and the goal here, this serves many purposes. Number one, and most importantly, is I'm, I'm very similar to David is I want to, I want to try to help people and try to give back also as much as possible. And these giveaways has been one of my, my outlets and one of my ways to be able to kind of give back. Um, so I'm very happy to be able to continue to do these giveaways. And I'm very supportive of uh, David helping me grow uh, with these giveaways. And the, the other great thing about this is this helps support uh, channels like LDS Prepper. Um, these giveaways are going to help grow his channel because it requires a subscription to his channel. Um, his videos are amazing. You guys know that because you're already here. And so let's help get the word out about LDS Prepper. It's going to promote the giveaway. It's going to promote his channel. It'll help promote EMP Shield and we'll be able to get some, some products out to people who really need them. And hopefully you're one of the lucky winners. Um, we'll probably come back on the show and announce the winners in a month once the giveaway is over. And uh, that'll be a fun time to, and a fun thing to do as well. So I personally am not registered. My wife is not registered in the giveaway. I'm not competing against you. I've already got my EMP shields, uh, but I certainly encourage you to, to spread this with er to everybody that you know, so you can help them. Uh, can you imagine your life without electricity when you could have had it? Could you imagine your life with your refrigerator freezer burned? Okay things exploding in your house, as we'll read about here in, in a few moments from people who've had experiences um, that, or not have that happen. Um, at any rate, uh, take advantage of this. This is a great offer. Um, thanks again, Andrew, for doing that. Um, all right, we've got a, a lot of questions that have come up from our previous interview. And so uh, I love it. And I, when people make comments, uh, under videos, I do read them, I do reply to them. Um, um, they take the time to write them. I do my best to take the time to answer. So let's go through some of these questions. Uh, after I get my cat off my, let go my, let go. Ah, goodness. <laughs> she wants to be in every video. Um, okay, so here's a, this is referring to our previous uh, interview. Uh, great comprehensive interview. 
And if you haven't seen that interview, I put a link below this video. It's already there to pre Andrew's previous video. He was amazing. So watch that video too. Uh, before I forget, I did talk to Andrew before this call and I said, Andrew, what if somebody uh, enters the giveaway but have doesn't want to wait for a month to see if they won because they want the protection now? Uh, what do we do for them? And she, he said, we'll do whatever they want. Right. So if you want world peace, I hope you win the giveaway because Andrew said, we'll do whatever they want. <laughs> uh, and I hope that you uh -huh. get that. But uh, one thing that he can control is either he will give you a, a full credit refund on your, on your product or send you a, any other EMP shield product that you would like. So very, very kind of Andrew. All right. So Great comprehensive interview, but I didn't. it didn't convince me to buy any of this. If you are the only person in your area who has electricity after three months of grid collapse, someone is going to steal your home, the vehicle, maybe, if you have a place to run without uh, within uh, range of your gas tank. So you probably have heard that before. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that, Andrew? Yeah, so it's, it's a very valid point. And this is why planning for this sort of thing really comes into play. Um, where you live comes into play. What, what's your strategy in this? But number one, what I can tell you is having the ability to have power is almost always going to be better than having nothing at all. Your goal in, is to protect yourself, your family, your loved ones, your friends. And there may be scenarios where you do have some form of power, maybe solar, uh, and you might not be able to turn on the lights because you want people to know that you have electricity. You might only run your freezer, but you know what? That freezer might contain food. And that food might help keep you alive and help, you know, help you uh, be safe. And so these things are very important. Uh, you know, it's the same with, um, you know, I get a lot with the vehicles as well. Like, you know, oh, you're going to be a target if you have a vehicle and you're going to run out of gas. And that's true. Those are very true. But I would still rather have a vehicle and the chance to survive than just say, oh, never mind. Somebody might come after me, so I'm going to give up. You know, we all have to be prepared yep. and this is a part of, we have to make this a part of our plan. This is one step of many of being prepared. Water filtration is another, fil uh, another important thing. Being able to grow your own food is another thing. Self-defense is another thing. You know, I just installed or having and professionally installed 28 security cameras on my property here. It's turned from a home set into a compound. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope I'm a year ahead of when I need it or two years or never need it, mm -hmm. but I don't want to need it a month after I needed it or a week after or a day after. So um, this is being protected from an EMP and lightning strikes mm -hmm. is uh, something that you can do. So why would you not do it if you can do it? And uh, if you don't have uh, electricity, uh, people are still going to come to your house because they're going to go door to door scrounging anyway. You might as well be able to be the one that has that you can take care of your family uh, because you, you've been protected from an EMP. Okay, David, you did a great job with this interview. I've been researching EMPs and EMP Shield Company for a couple of years. I have spoken to your guests on the phone before and asked them for uh, some a ton of questions. I have, which means they answer their phone and they will take the time to answer your questions. And that's been my experience too. You know, I was new um, as a customer and I had questions. I called on a Saturday and you guys answered the phone. Mm -hmm. I was so surprised. And everyone speaks fluent English. It's like they were born and raised in the United States and, you know, communicate well. Uh, I watched most of their interviews on, on YouTube uh, they have done, and I'm still learned some important things I did not know in this interview. For example, my new solar system has optimizers on it, and I will be calling EMP Shield on Monday to see what I need to do. Good job, great info. Uh, by the way, I did talk to Dave, and he uh, got the EMP Shields he needs to be able to protect his solar panel system and, and he did find out that those um, optimizers are not necessarily the best way to go if you're trying to protect your, your investment. Your thoughts? No, no, um, no, uh, yeah, so that's exactly right. And you know, this is, a, I love this question. Uh, um, is, now I have, go ahead. No, it's okay, go ahead.
Did I lose you? I'm just, I have to say that it is snowing here. We've gotten a couple inches already. I've, yeah, I, so it's affecting our internet because we have, um, Andrew, are you there? I'm here. Okay. So let me just make sure that we're still streaming live. I hope we were still going. Um, uh, so I, I, it is snowing here. I was explaining it is snowing and uh, that interferes because we have radio internet here because mm -hmm. we're out in the county. Mm -hmm. And the more particulars we get in the air, the the the, diff the more difficult it becomes so um we will march forward i know that the video is being recorded on my end and so if anything happens uh you know i can i can fix that sure so let me uh, share the screen again here um and all right i think that is good can you see? Can you see the screen, Andrew? Yes, sir. I can. Okay. So uh, before I lost you, and that may happen again, but uh, please continue. You're talking about the the uh, the uh, invert the what do they call it? Um, optimizers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Go so um, I love this question. This comes up a lot because some of the more modern systems systems have what's called either power optimizers or micro inverters. Um, and although there is many, many applications that EMP shield can protect and, and even many, many types of solar systems, those systems with power optimizers, unfortunately, while we, we can protect them, it's just simply not cost effective. And I'm not going to let my folks you know, it, it would cost a, a dramatic amount of money to protect 50 to 100 optimizers in some of these systems. So uh, we are able to protect the remain remainder of the solar system. And in this scenario, we told the customer that it's almost better to just buy extra optimizers and keep them in a Faraday cage. This is one of those scenarios uh, because the optimizer only costs at 25 to $40 as opposed to the EMP shield, which would cost, you know, several hundred dollars. So um, we protected the remainder of his system and we helped him find the protection he needed, or, or I think he, we may have had to build his own Faraday cage. I'm not sure what the scenario was there. And uh, I'm sure he went out and got the optimizers and they're now protected. The remainder of his system is protected with the MP shield. And I think he was a pretty happy uh, customer. He is. He called me back. He was very happy with the customer support he got and the solution that uh, you guys came up with. Him. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, the big deal is still the nuclear power plants all over the U.S. Now, Andrew, this was the number one comment and, and string of comments that people are really, really concerned about nuclear power plants and what they should do. What are, what are your thoughts? I would be very concerned as well. In fact, I live, uh, we're in Burlington, Kansas, and there is a nuclear power plant very, very close, a couple miles away from me as well here. We are currently working uh, with the DEMSO down at Joint Base San Antonio to begin protecting a portion of grid, which will then stem out at a certain point across the United States and become the standard. Um, EMP Shield does have critical infrastructure products for government nuclear power plants and those sorts of things. However, most nuclear power facilities are not protected currently. Uh, that's just something for people to understand and it's really important um, we're working and we're working to get the protection out, but at the current time, most of them don't. So it's important that you have a plan available or you, you make a plan, excuse me, on what you're going to do um, if this does occur in your area. And it's probably a good idea to, to get out of Dodge and get away from that plant, especially if you know it's not protected. It reminds me of when I lived in Texas down uh, north of Houston, there was an evacuation plan for hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I live by a nuclear power plant, I would have a David Gilmore family evacuation plan. And That's it wouldn't be after 4.5 million people got it in the road ahead of me. Right. Uh, I would be first one out of Dodge. Mm -hmm. okay? So, you know, we can't just pick up and move our families uh, because we don't like the area that we live in. 
when our livelihood is there, but we certainly can have a plan to get out of Dodge. Right. Um, all right, so I forgot to bring up the graphic. I found this uh, nice graphic, uh, image, this nice sad image of a nuclear power plant on, on fire. <laughs> Okay, so we, uh, I asked Andrew and he got his team together and we have some verified EMP customer testimonials this evening. And uh, people say, you know, do these things really work? Well, uh, they really work. Uh, this is from Cortec. And, and what gave me this idea is that they actually commented in the comments on our last interview and we're so grateful that they had this. And this is the letter that they sent to EMP Shield. Cortec uh, purchased seven three-phase 480-volt EMP shield devices for its machine shop. Cortec had experienced several lightning strikes to its buildings over the years, which caused damage to equipment and, more importantly, loss in productivity. In June 2021, 20, uh, uh, one of the Cortex buildings was struck by lightning. The EMP shield devices worked as designed and stopped the power surge from traveling beyond the EMP at, at the uh, uh, breaker box, a uh, panel. I added some words here that, to make it more clear. Cortex was able to call out an electrician to evaluate the breaker panel and was back in production within a couple of hours. There was over $1.4 million of equipment attached to this breaker panel. Uh, there is no telling what the potential damage to Cortex equipment might have been. More importantly, the avoidance of the loss of productivity was huge. And we were able to save, uh, had, we had several jobs uh, due to ship that could not afford to be late. The investment in the EMP shield devices has paid for itself multiple times over sincerely Justin Court. Um, I, what a great testimonial. So not only do we have it for the cars, for generators, but we also have phase three industrial commercial level EMP devices available. And uh, I, there's actually a discount code. Andrew's uh, got a discount code for me where you will get $50 off each unit. So if you buy three units, you're gonna get $150 off that purchase. If you buy more, they bought seven here. Uh, you're going to get save a substantial amount of money. So mm -hmm. no need to wait for the contest to, uh, to happen. Go ahead and get registered in the contest, but don't wait and, and, and not be able to send a letter like this because you didn't have the EMP and shells. This saved them $1.4 million in possible uh, broken equipment, but was able to get their jobs out. So they still have the income for their employees. Um, how does this make you feel when you get a letter like this? Uh, you know, it's it's really great. Um, you know, it's why we got into the business, uh, into this business is to be able to help as many people as possible, especially when it comes to EMP, which was a problem that nobody was really able to solve. Um, you know, before EMP Shield, you could use a Faraday cage, which meant that whatever's inside of it is not operational. It's, it has to be inside that Faraday cage. And Having uh, the technology that we've invented that allows you to use your electrical systems and have them protected uh, has really been uh, incredible. And e even for lightning, in examples like some of these, uh, we've saved people a lot of money and it's a really good feeling. Yeah. And it, I'm really happy that they're able to keep, continue their business. Um, this gentleman, I was speaking to customer service, they had had issues in the past and, and they lost quite a bit. Of, I won't go into de too detailed, but they lost quite a bit of money previously to lightning strikes and so they know what kind of damage normally occurs and um yeah. you know it's it's great um and there's been quite you know, a few i don't i don't have 1.4 million dollars worth of appliances at my house <laughs> but why would i not take uh, some money and protect all those appliances mm -hmm. and all the hundreds of dollars of food that i have in those appliances and the cost of replacing the appliances and the inconvenience of not having the appliance. Right. Yep. With one, and that happens all with one device. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Another question. A microwave is a, is a good Faraday cage. Just make sure your items are in, inside it when the EMP hits. And then someone responded, nope, too many holes, holes for ventilation, holes for the wires, et cetera. If a fruit fly can get in, the pulse can get in. The cage is, uh, on the front is designed for a specific microwave wavelength 
not an EMP pulse wavelength. Go ahead. That's exactly correct. Um, you know, there's a, there is a myth out there that you use a microwave and it, a microwave might provide some protection, but this, this answer from this uh, individual is absolutely correct. They're designed for very specific frequencies and very specific things. And, uh, and it is not going to protect your equipment from an EMP. But with that being said, um, and I believe uh, we've got a link somewhere on the video description um, that explains, but we've got a video that can show you how to make a Faraday cage for less than $10. It's, it's very affordable. Um, so for those who do have the need for a Faraday cage with devices that aren't plugged in, you know, check out the link. It will, it'll help you. And it's very simple to, to make. Yeah. The link is below this video already. I put it in here when I uploaded the video. Awesome. Okay, question. Who is, uh, who is to say that the GPS satellites are still functional after an event? And I thought the second question went along with it, so I put them together on the same page. Might be a dumb question, but when it comes to satellites, is it reasonable to assume that some won't be impacted? So we could still use sat phones if, a Faraday, uh, if in a Faraday bag? Yeah, so that's these are great questions, and and uh, to whoever asked this, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Um, so, number one, GPS is more than likely not going to work after an EMP. This uh, the the reason being is that there is actually ground based um, systems that are required to connect between the satellites that involve timing and location services. Um, so GPS is is more than likely not going to work unless those facilities are EMP hardened. Um, and then uh, the second thing is about satellites. So a satellite will be destroyed if it's within the range of the nuclear weapon in space. So if it's within that blast radius or that area, the, the satellite will obviously no longer work. Uh, for satellites that are not in that radius and that are still operational, um, I'd presume that some of the functionality might still be there. Um, however, I am not quite an expert on exactly how sat phones work in relation to what is on the ground, just like GPS. Um, so there, there's certainly no guarantee that your sat phone is going to work either. Um, and on that question, I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably go ask engineering and then um, unfortunately they're in DC right now, but uh, probably tomorrow afternoon, they're coming back tomorrow morning. I'll get the exact answer to the how the satellite communications actually works in relation to some of the ground facilities and see 100% for sure if they will be operational and I'll post it down in the comments once I get the answer. I do have a couple sat phones uh, for my family, my wife and me, and I have talked to Tina at the the, the satellite phone store. Mm -hmm. And she says with the phones that she sells that we have, if if uh, an EMP happens on the ground and those communication satellites are still up and uh, that there will be sat phone uh, connectivity. Excellent. So uh, the, the reason why she said that is because they're using military satellites. Oh, they're not okay. using commercial satellites. So right. they've contracted for space on the military satellites. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you get your phone somewhere else, but if you use my uh, link, ldsprepper.com slash sat phone, I should have put that on here. Um, then you can get a free sat phone, just pay for the monthly subscription, the minutes roll over. And if an EMP happens, you know that your sat phone connection is on a military satellite. Very cool. Okay. Uh, next question here. The thought of an EMP shield is a good thing indeed, but I've got a question that no one seems to want to address. And to be clear from the start, I am not trying to be negative or argumentative. The question is, even if the uh, shield saves your personal items, what good will it be if the very source of power, the grid goes down and we have no power anyhow? Yeah. Uh, well, this is, this is another very good question. It's, it's quite a common question. We've actually addressed it uh, many times previously, but it's, it's a good, and let's go ahead and address it again. So number one, um, let's not, not just think about EMP. Let's think about something that is for sure going to happen and will continuously happen to the earth, and that's coronal mass ejection. That's what comes from the sun. Uh, we know that large-scale CMEs are cyclical and happen every 150-ish years. But we do experience small to medium-sized solar flares quite often. And there has been instances in the last decade, several, where grid has gone down for a week or two weeks, but then come back up. 
So number one, it's important to protect your home because it would be horrible if you take a medium sized solar flare and the grid goes down for two weeks and then the grid comes right back up, but your home was destroyed because you didn't have protection on it. Um, Andrew, um, sounds like you, I lost your audio. Oh, can you hear me now? Uh, just a second, just a second. Let me. Okay, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. So you clapped your hands or something and the audio went away. So we're good now. Oh, Go ahead. Go I'm ahead. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no. Um, should I, I think everybody else probably heard that, right? Or should I just say the whole thing over again? Um, I would, I would go ahead and repeat what you were talking about, the coronal mass ejections. Not a problem. So um, basically what I was referring to is that coronal mass ejections uh, at a small and medium sized level actually do occur more, com more commonly than we think. There's been several in the, uh, in the last decade or so. And so in these examples of real world examples where the grid has gone down for a week or two weeks and then comes back up, it would be really horrible to have your electronics destroyed from that and then have the grid come back up within a week or two so that's number one is you really want to you know you want to protect your home so that when the grid comes back up whether it's two days two weeks two months you're back up and running immediately which is important number two is lightning uh, we've already discussed using um, you know that, that last testimonial but emp shield is not just a it's not a, just a surge protector we guarantee 100 lightning protection and our devices are backed by $25,000 um, and they are very effective. They will stop a direct lightning strike as we'll see several testimonials in this video. Um, so it's very effective. And number three, the reason why you'd wanna have this in your home, even if the grid goes down is because most of us or a lot of us, uh, especially on this channel and some of the other channels that, that I uh, have been on is we're looking at either have or looking at doing uh, backup power systems, really whether, that they're able to keep, continue their whether it's a generator uh, or a, uh, oh. sorry, that was me. Oh, it's okay. Yep. So having a backup power system, whether it's a generator or a solar system, you want to be able to protect your house because then, you know, even if the grid goes down, you're going to have your protected home and then your backup power system and you'll still be up and running. Um, and there's a lot of off grid applications that really, uh, you know, could benefit from that as well. Um, if you want, you can get portable solar. Uh, this is why I have a picture here. You can put that in a Faraday bag. Actually, when you buy this particular um, portable solar device, you get a Faraday bag to put it in. But I totally agree. What happens if the power goes down and comes back up? Wouldn't you like to have all your appliances? Uh, I certainly would, for sure. Okay, another verified EMP Shield customer testimonial. Thank you for your prompt response. Our home EMP Shield saved me from damage after a lightning strike. Our well pump was not, and we're on a well pump here too. It's one of my biggest concerns is water, water, water. Okay, right. our well pump was not working, and the well repairman traced it back to to the major breaker that was blown and was then. Uh, and then we discovered that our EMP shield had saved the day. It was almost blown in half, but after we disconnect, uh, disconnected it and reset the breaker, all was well. No damage to the home other than the EMP shield, which was uh, also replaced ASAP. Thanks again, Jim Tong. Great. What an awesome experience. Uh, mm -hmm. No damage, no cost. And I keep reading from these testimonials that the the strength of these lightning strikes are so massive that your EMP shield will absorb it and save all this equipment, but it at at, at its own cost. It, it just will blows up. It, it's it's designed at a certain level to sacrifice itself to protect the electrical system. It's it's designed to do that, and um, it, it's many many times. In fact, a good a, a good uh, story is a water station um, that. We, you know, they just decided their the county decided to buy lightning protection and it got hit. Um, and, you know, the EMP shield was destroyed because lightning is incredibly powerful. But the water station remained operational, giving water to thousands of people. 
Uh, and then after that, they, the county approached us and we're now working to outfit that entire county with EMP protection. Um, so it's it's just a, a real world uh, example that led into people understanding how powerful this technology really is and then moving on to outfitting the entire county. So it's it's a, yeah. a really incredible technology. It's it's so cost worthy. I mean, it just makes sense to make a single investment to protect all the appliances in your home. Mm -hmm. And so you want to leave everything plugged in. Um, that's what we do. You know, people want to protect from lightning strikes. They want to protect from coronal mass ejections. They don't want their appliances blowing up. But uh, honestly, my refrigerator is plugged in 24 seven. Right. My deep freeze with my elk is plugged in 24 seven, right? Mm -hmm. My appliances are plugged in and it, and without an EMP shield, if you get hit with lightning, or a surge from the power lines mm -hmm. or an EMP and those appliances are plugged in, they're toast. Right. And how do I know that? I've never shared this publicly, but when I was in high school, my dad asked me to cut down the oak tree between our house and our neighbor's house mm -hmm. and said, make sure that tree does not hit our house. It didn't hit our house. It, hit the, it fell over to my neighbor's house, took down the power lines, burned every appliance in his house. Mm -hmm. the, uh, clocks exploded, you know, uh, the refrigerator burned up. It was it was horrendous experience for me as a teenager, but I know firsthand, you get a surge from the power line, uh, those appliances are going down. Unless yes. between the power line and your house, you've got an EMP shield mm -hmm. and it takes that, takes that uh, brunt of that. So right. it was um, several, several thousands of dollars that uh, we had to replace equipment in our neighbor's house. Okay, so use that discount uh, link. Uh, when you use ldsprepper.com slash EMP shield, it automatically puts the discount in the shopping cart for you. So you don't have to worry about adding any discount codes. Okay, perfectly good iPhone is going to be worthless without Wi-Fi and functioning cellular towers. And I think you really kind of addressed this. Uh, you may want to expound more, but uh, what if the what if it's down just for hours or days or a few months and then comes back up? So a perfectly I, good iPhone will be perfectly fine when the towers come back up. Yes, in a couple actually, there's a myth associated to things like iPhones. So um, we actually firmly believe that the iPhone itself and more modern day cell phones probably will not be destroyed from an EMP. Uh, and you know, in in a lot of movies, they're like, oh, my cell phone was destroyed. Well. We don't believe that to be the case, except for the scenario where your cell phone is plugged into the wall. Um, if it's plugged into the wall, then there is a high likelihood it's going to be destroyed. And that's not to say that all cell phones are safe and that and most things with microelectronics are going to be destroyed. There's I'm, a just gonna I'm just going to interrupt you. It will be destroyed if it's plugged in the wall if you don't have an EMP, EMP shield, shield. on right. the house. That's right. Just, just to clarify. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, the reason that an iPhone is more than likely not going to be destroyed is number one, because of the footprint. But number two, there is already some EMI built in shielding into the cell phone. And because of the footprint and the shielding that was required, um, you know, it has a very low likelihood of being destroyed. And then I also have a second point to this that is kind of more prepper related, but your cell phone, even if you don't have Wi-Fi or GPS or the Internet, it's still a tool. So yes. you can save documents, you can save references. Um, it is a very powerful tool that you can still use uh, after an event or after a scenario. And so people should keep that in mind as well. If, if you're one of those people that don't like to keep an encyclopedia in, in the bookshelf, you can store the encyclopedia on your iPhone, you know, and, mm -hmm. and reference it if you need to. So, yeah, my wife is going through all of our documents and digitizing our documents and storing mm -hmm. them electronically. Yeah. I'm using the old papers to start the fire in a wood burning stove in the morning. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, these uh, electronic storage devices that we call phones uh, can be very, very valuable, valuable to us, even if the towers are down temporarily. Mm -hmm. Okay. To be fair to the shield, I can see where it would be useful for a modern car, but that raises another issue. Unless you ha uh, one has an unlimited supply of gasoline stored, when their tank ran out, they'd be back to square one. Of course, they could siphon gas from the dead cars, but 
that uh, would wouldn't last for long. Thoughts? Yeah. So I would rather have one tank of gas to get home than zero tanks of gas. Uh, that vehicle that's functioning because of the EMP shield and that single tank of gas can literally be the difference between life and death. And I just think about um, even right now here in Burlington, Kansas, I'm, I'm actually at the manufacturing plant, but it's uh, it's 12 degrees outside, maybe colder now since I looked. It's snowing. And if I was, uh, if this facility happened to be 50 miles from my home, I don't think I'd make it home on foot. Or if I did, it would be very, very horrible and very, very dangerous. And this is in, in today, not to mention if it's after an EMP where you're vulnerable, you're by yourself, you're in the cold. So having a functional vehicle with even just a single tank of, of gas is the difference between life and death. That's why the EMP shield vehicle model is by far one of our most popular devices and the most sought after is because your vehicle is a tool. We can't estimate when an EMP is going to happen. Right. Uh, whether it's a man-made CME, we have a little, we know we have some heads up, mm -hmm. but an EMP or a lightning strike, okay? We just can't anticipate that. But if I'm not at home, I can get home because my car has an EMP shield on it mm -hmm. and I can drive, then I'm driving home and I'm not having to walk 50 miles or yes, whatever sir. it is. Okay. And whatever, right now it would be 14 degrees in snow in uh, here in Idaho. Not, it would not be a good night mm -hmm. to walk home. Okay. What about folks with pacemakers? This came up uh, a couple of times. Uh, will an EMP affect uh, folks with the pacemakers, what were you able to find out about that? Yeah, so the answer is uh, more than likely there's not going to be any issue with the pacemaker. It is a very, very small footprint, um, not a very large antenna, and we do not believe it's going to be large enough to induce enough energy to become damaged. And so the second part is, uh, uh, would it be possible to make a Faraday cage large enough to, to shield a house or a sleeping bag type shielding for a person who's homeless? Yeah. So yeah, you could make a Faraday cage of any size, depending on how much money you had. Um, you could you could absolutely uh, build a completely sealed enclosure, which is what re is required for a Faraday cage of any size. Um, some shipping containers, which already provide pretty decent protection, could be 100% sealed as well. Um, I believe I did see a question before that also referred to some kind of uh, paint. Um, although I'm not yeah, we're coming up. Yeah, we're coming up to that. I'll, I'll save it for then for for that yeah. one um so the good news is if you have a pacemaker i wouldn't be concerned about that and you don't really need to worry about making a faraday cage to cover your own house you you'd have to be extremely well off financially to, to be able to do that right um and uh, so good news is pacemaker should be there for you all right another verified emp customer testimonial this one comes from uh, Greg. Yeah. Uh, it says rural water district number one purchased three MP shield units in June of 2020. Is this the company that you were talking about? Yeah, I, I didn't realize that we had this one, but yeah, this is this is the uh, scenario. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, we purchased two uh, for our pump stations and one to protect our office equipment. In September of 2021, our main pump station appeared to be struck by lightning. The EMP 3P, this is another uh, three phase uh, system here. Mm -hmm. uh, model was blown off the wall mm -hmm. where it was mounted and the bottom of the device blew out. Um, what a nice sacrificial device do you have here? It's just awesome that it will do that. Uh, to our surprise, the EMP Shield product had done its job as advertised and we had no damage to any of our electrical equipment. We are very pleased with the product. It's probably saved the water district several thousands of dollars and a lot of downtime. Very pleased with the product, Greg. I won't try to pronounce last name. District manager from Jackson County. Mm -hmm. um, great testimonial. Again, use that uh, discount uh, link there to save on your EMP purchase. Can I have uh, Can I have their product installed in my home with my whole house surge suppressor, or would it, or would this take the place of the whole house surge suppressor, and would in place of it also providing EMP protection, or can I use and need both? Yeah, so there's no need for both. Um, just the EMP shield by itself will absolutely do the job. To answer more specifically, though, could you have both? You absolutely could, but it's it's not necessary. But having both would not hurt anything. But 
there's no there's no more, really no need to do that. The EMP shield will more than do the job, uh, and uh, it's very very robust. If you had a whole house surge suppressor, would you install an EMP shield, and if so, why? So yeah, you uh, a whole home surge protect surge protector. Then this is that's a great question, David. Is not the same thing as EMP protection. So a regular surge protector begins operating uh, in the microseconds or later. So 10 second, 10 microseconds, 15 microseconds, and then only has certain capabilities as far as its robustness. Um, normally, it's anywhere from 20,000 amps to maybe 50,000 amps. The EMP shield begins operations in half of a nanosecond. So hundreds, of, possibly thousands of times faster than a regular surge protector and has a, a robustness that is at least four times more than the average surge protector. So we're at roughly 200,000 amps combined on the EMP shield. So it's incredibly robust and incredibly fast. And that's, that's part of the secret sauce on what's required to be able to meet those military certifications for EMP protection. You know what I like about your $25,000 uh, protection warranty? It's uh, just a few words. It's not all, it's not this huge paragraph with all of these uh, extraction, you know, unless it's an act of God or unless the, you know, the, what, this or that, it's simply a sentence or two and yeah. we're, you know, you're protected and you're covered. Yes. Oh, and if you don't mind me uh, putting a little bit of insight into that, and I challenge anybody who's listening to go look, most regular surge protectors are very sneaky on their warranties. And I, I challenge you to go look and, and see what, you, what your warranty says if you have a separate surge protector. But what I've seen in the major brands is most of them don't cover acts of God. That's lightning. So if it says it does not cover acts of God, they will not protect, they won't, the warranty will not cover lightning. A lot of them don't cover over voltage. That's a power surge. So right there, those two alone, if it, if it doesn't have those, your warranty is not covering them. Um, and that's the two things that you probably bought this whole house surge protector to do. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So it's, it's a little sneaky uh, because they want you to think it's a lightning protection system, but we are the only 100% guaranteed lightning protection system on the market in our price range. I'm sure there's some others that are several, several thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars, but you know, for a device that's $300 that guarantees it, we're the only one. You guys rock. You really, really do. Okay. Can I create a Faraday cage out of a shipping container by grounding it? The only time the doors are open is when we are inside. Yeah, this is a great one. So uh, a shipping container does provide a, a pretty decent amount of protection as it is. It's a big metal container. You can absolutely run the ground. To make it a 100% Faraday cage, you're going to need to seal Everything that had any crack where there's rubber, you're going to need to find a way to seal that. And there is ways to do it. There's special tapes out there that you can purchase. Um, there, there are certain things you can do to make sure that nothing is coming in or out as far as signal and energy. And once you've done that, it's 100% Faraday cage. But even um, shipping containers as they come right now do provide a very good amount of protection. It's just not 100% protection. So... So the, the thing to remember, and the question could be asked, you know, what about a gun safe? You know, it's really the same kind of situation. Yes. It's, when, it's, I did, when I did testing on my gun safe, um, where there was a rubber seal and it wasn't metal on metal, mm -hmm. that's where I, I was seeing a problem. Yes, sir. So whatever it is, uh, it, you can't just put a strap from the door to the side and you know to, to carry the current across you actually have to have metal metal all the way down mm -hmm. yeah so, it needs to be completely uh, completely sealed yeah okay how do AAA batteries hold up in to an emp yeah this was an interesting one i, I actually had a um you know a fairly long discussion today about this with some of our team here um here's the bottom line this is a very, this question has a lot of variables associated to it. But what I can tell you for sure is if the AAA battery is not connected to anything, if it's by itself, it's going to be just fine. If, if it's inside of a device, it, a lot of it depends on primarily two variables, which is how much energy is coming down and how large is the antenna that the battery is connected to. 
So what is it inside? Is it if the AAA batteries inside of a, something that has 500 feet of wire, it probably is going to get destroyed. If it's in something that's a toy that's like this big, there's a low a, a low likelihood. But I would presume that this question is really more for those who are storing batteries for use later. And so in that instance where the battery is not connected, they're going to be just fine. Uh, yes, and I also um, store my batteries. I buy uh, 223 ammo storage boxes, little plastic mm -hmm. storage boxes, and I store all my batteries lined up in a row. Okay, they're not touching each other. I don't have ends, you know, la you know, positive and negative touching each other. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a quick grab and go. They're organized, and I have no concern about any problems if an EMP or CME happens with those batteries. Mm -hmm. I also have a lot of uh, rechargeable batteries and I have two chargers in case one of the chargers uh, has a problem. One is none, two is one, right? Right. Okay, here we go. Uh, a, a testimonial from Christy. Uh, we have an EMP shield on our home. All three of our vehicles, our solar system and our Tesla batteries. And I'm so glad that we have them. The peace of mind is worth it. She sounds like me. Okay, I've got them on everything. In Texas, we had a really bad lightning storm and our house got hit. One of our EMP shields took the lightning strike and according to the technician, saved our expensive Tesla batteries. EMP shields saved all of our expensive equipment. We did, uh, we did have to replace our internet router because it was connected to the exterior of our home on our roof. Mm -hmm. The solo tech, so... I don't know if the um, radio EMP shield device would have helped that. But anyway, that's a, for a different subject, a uh, different topic. But if she's listening to this, she, she may want to talk to you about that. Uh, the solar technician had to come out to connect our new internet Wi-Fi router to the solar gateway. And that's when he said it saved our solar equipment. Mm -hmm. Customer service is the best. I have to totally agree with that. You guys are awesome. I appreciate that. I appreciate that I get to speak to a person. Exchange, exchange of my EMP device was simple to complete. Thank you, EMP Shield, for your excellent service and dedication to your customers. I did not get paid for my comments above. I'm just pleased with the products and service. Christy Barnes, Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, this tells it all, you know. I, I could be a naysayer as much as I wanted to, but right. these people had real life experience. This is not theoretical. They right. saved their Tesla batteries. They saved all their equipment, okay? Because of a simple investment. Question, when we break out of, uh, let's see, I gotta move the, this here. When can we break out our things that we place in a Faraday cage after an EMP? Yeah. So I actually, this was the first time this question's ever been asked. Um, this is the first time this has ever been asked. So uh, this is a really interesting question, which should get your mind thinking about a lot of different things. So number one, to answer the question directly, you can take them right out of the Faraday cage immediately. The E3, which is still going to be going on, is not going to affect small devices. You're okay. But something to consider is that a lot of our um, experts in EMP, our physicist, our engineer, uh, you know, we've had discussions with uh, Peter Pry and some of the EMP commission folks and the DHS. There is a, a firm belief that there could be the use of multiple EMPs. And now what, hear me out on this. So number one, you can't have EMPs back to back. So don't, that's, that's a myth. It takes time for the atmosphere to recharge, but there is a theory that in part of, or some of the adversary's strategy, they might EMP, wait a week or two, EMP again to make sure everything was absolutely destroyed and then do something else as a part of their plan. So keep that in mind is although you can take that equipment out of your Faraday cage immediately and it'll be safe, there could be a second EMP coming at a certain point in time and just keep that in mind. So I'd say take it out, use it, put it right back in. And then I'd do that for a month or two like that until you know for sure there's not going to be a second one. Yeah, in our uh, Faraday bags, we actually have a sacrificial 
canary in the uh, in the mine shaft clock that we take out. It's an mm -hmm. electric clock, and we'll take it out after the first EMP, mm -hmm. and uh, leave the other things in the EMP bags. Take them out, use them, put them back, like you mentioned. Right. So we'll keep the primary the items in the in the parity bags, mm -hmm. uh, and then when that at the if the clock keeps going and it's been in two three weeks four weeks then we I think we've, we're pretty safe. If it clock burns out, then we know we've got hit by another EMP. Right. Uh, the, the nice thing is is that all my appliances that are plugged into the wall with my EMP shield, I'm not worried about that second EMP. Right. Because the EMP shield will will protect those when the second one comes. That's absolutely correct. Yep. Yeah, it'll it'll protect con continuous. We tested it to 40. Uh, so it'll be good for a very, very long time. Um, I we know there will never be a time where we have 40 EMPs, anyways, but it, it's capable. Right. So. so an EMP hit, just to clarify, Andrew, is not the same thing as a lightning hitting your house and your EMP shield exploding. <laughs> Oh. Okay. Yeah, no, so, absolutely not. It's they're very different. So lightning is millions of uh, volts of electricity and, and a huge amount of energy pinpointed in a specific location that then induces and, and spreads within a certain area. Very, very destructive in a specific location. You know, um, EMP, although it is a large amount of energy, is not the same as a lightning strike. So there's induction levels. There's certain. There's so many variables associated to it, um, and it's also very fast. So it's it's happening in the nanoseconds and then the low microseconds, and then it's done. Yeah. So. Well, the good thing is that lightning never strikes the same place twice, right? <laughs> that's what we'll they learn. That isn't the case. <laughs> I think that's that's not true, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, none of this stuff is verified, short of experiencing an actual EMP. Well, you want to talk about your testing? Because the, mil the military tests, NASA tests, EMP shield tests, yeah, mm -hmm. we can generate EMPs and we're testing. Yes. And so that's, um, this is just one of those things that you got to change people's thinking. An EMP is a man-made weapon um, and we can generate EMPs in a lab. It's, it's actually, now not anybody in the world can go do it, but there is testing facilities. One of them is Keystone Compliance. Which is that's, where we that's went this through. photo right. This photo that's here right. is from Keystone. That's Keystone Compliance, and uh, they are a military certified EMP testing facility. They are world renowned, um, and we went there and surpassed all of the military standards. Uh, we actually just finished a series of tests with a gentleman called Bill Radaski. Some of you may recognize the name. So he was one of the leaders of the U.S. EMP Commission, and uh, him and his company Meditech just did a series of tests on EMP shield, and we passed. And there is also uh, there's going to be test results and a white paper coming. Um, they are very uh, seem to be very excited and pleased with those uh, with our products and the test results as well. So that's coming shortly. So EMP Shield is not only meeting the military specs; it's surpassing all of the military specs across the board. Yes, absolutely. Yep, it is uh, yeah. well above the the military specifications. Yeah. Is it, it's not going to be an EMP threat. Uh, they're just going to cut the power off and call it a cyber attack. Um, well, you know, there's been a lot of verbiage going around the last couple of days about cyber attacks uh, on the banking system, on the grid, on communications. And uh, I'm just, I, I, I'm simply anticipating that People mean what they say, and that will just going to be, it's just going to happen. I don't know when, but I'm preparing for that. That's why I have what I have and encourage people to do the same. Yeah. And uh, cyber is a big threat too. Uh, let's, let's be straightforward here. Cyber also is a huge threat. Um, in fact, we're involved in a grant that we're applying for that is uh, designed specifically for the upgrade of cyber and cyber defense and infrastructure upgrading. Um, and there's a big push for the whole United States right now to be improving cyber. Um, with that being said, I, I don't know exactly. I know that cyber probably at some point has, obviously it has, and will be used again to attack the United States. Um, but I don't foresee that cyber has the extreme destructive capabilities of an EMP. But I do think, and we also had a, uh, a call that was um, 
it was live with Peter Pry, and actually they wrote an article in the Washington Times about us and him. But there was discussion about the use in conjunction with each other of cyber attacks and then an EMP. Um, so that is also a scenario that is very possible. Um, so our, our adversaries do have cyber th uh, threats towards us, and they also have super EMP weapons as well. So, you know, I used to think uh, if we get if the power grid gets a cyber attack, it just shuts down. But the the power grid is run by computers, and they could cyber attack basically get into the computer and tell the computer send a surge, mm -hmm. right? Oh, and definitely. It's not just shut. Your electricity gets shut off. All of a sudden, all your appliances blow up because mm -hmm. you didn't have an EMP shield on your house. Right. And um, that, and that's what the cyber attack is, is mm -hmm. to do as much damage as possible, not just turn off the power. Right. Okay. Uh, here we have a testimony from Holly. Uh, this is great. Uh, they say lightning doesn't strike the same place twice, but I am a testament to the fact that indeed it does. The transformers that powers my home has been directly struck twice in five months. I, I have run across an uh, I had run across an advertisement for an EMP shield a while back on YouTube video. I ordered it because where I live in Florida has the infamous nickname Lightning Capital of the World. I had the EMP shield installed in my house by a licensed electrician, which is the way to do it. Uh, when arriving, uh, when it arrived and not long after the first strike hit the transformer. And I just have to say, this person just felt directed and took action on that, on that impression. Mm -hmm. and instead of regretting saying, oh, I should have done that when I had that thought. Right. And then she goes on, uh, the EMP shield did its job as advertised and not one device or appliance was damaged as a result. The EMP shield took the hit in intercepting and shielding me from the potential costly uh, repairs. I called EMP shield directly and explained what happened. And with the lifetime guarantee, they sent a replacement uh, unit out for a small fee. Is there like a $50 fee or something for a replacement? Yeah, so it's it's fifty dollars. Should the EMP stop functioning at any point in time, it could be lightning. It could say you could just say, "Hey, it's the LEDs that doesn't matter. We will replace it for fifty dollars. No questions asked." And I also I just noticed that, but it's actually a uh, it's not a lifetime guarantee. It's a ten year guarantee. So I, that must have guarantee. been yeah, she must have been a little mistaken there. But it's still a very long guarantee. <laughs> you know. Okay. Very good. Uh, the uh, customer service was great. Everybody says that. And I personally experienced that. It's so true. It's so nice to have a customer service that is as awesome as it is. Uh, very friendly and prompt. I put the new unit on when I received it. And five months later, bam, a second lightning strike to the transformer. Once again, no damage to the uh, contents of my home electrical system as the unit took the hit with a direct strike. It is, as they say, one and done, but who knows uh, how uh surges who know but who knows how surges up till i can't read that how surges up till then it spared me um our area is rife with the outages quite regularly so again i called mp shield and they promptly sent me another unit to replace it i just returned the old units with their prepaid labels so their quality control department could inspect and gather data for any future improvements if needed. I love that, that she put that in because you're, you're not just tossing them in the gar garbage, you're looking at them and saying, hey, mm -hmm. what happened? What can we do to make it better? Yep, we, we actually, uh, we cut them in certain areas and we dissect them and actually look at what happened inside of the devices. And she concludes by saying, with the cost of appliances today, I shudder to think what, what could have happened had I not been protected by the EMP shield. I made a wise investment and twice I had been protected from a, a potentially bad scenario. Thank you EMP shield for your innovation, protection and phenomenal service. It gives me one less thing to worry about in this very worrisome world, sincerely Holly Forehead. Uh, that's so true. You know, mm -hmm. I keep saying, I end my presentations by saying, if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. Right. And that's exactly what she expressed here. She she bought it, had it installed, and that fear went away. 
when the event happened, it was an event, not an emergency because everything didn't blow up. Right. Didn't have to spend thousands of dollars replacing things. And she just uh, got another unit to take care of it. What a great, great testimonial. Okay, again, use that discount link down there, ldsprepper.com slash EMP shield. Uh, doesn't an EMP ruin all electrical wires coming from poles into buildings? Good question. That's a good question. The answer is no. We're not. We're, the wire itself is not going to be damaged from the EMP. Um, it, what we're really looking, as far as damage is concerned from an EMP, it's going to be microelectronics, anything with transistors, resistors, diodes, microprocessors, or or components in, in there that have silicon arsenide, which cracks when it's hot. That's what's going to be destroyed. Um, the wire itself is is not going to be destroyed. So there's. Um um stories of wires catching on fire during the carrington event mm -hmm. but we're not using the same wiring that they had in the 1800s so right. um it's the my and really i'm not too concerned about the wires coming to my house i'm concerned about what's inside my house right i'm in the uk and would love this product um uh, would love this to protect our solar panels but i guess it's just for the u.s Oh, um, so no, we do actually ship to the UK uh, and a couple other English speaking countries. We don't ship to a lot of countries, um, but Australia, the UK, I think uh, maybe New Zealand, I can't quote them all, but there's there's five or six that we do ship to um, that we're friendly with. So if you're in the UK or somewhere like that, give us a call and uh, we'll see if the country is on the list for shipping. Well, if they go to if they go to ldsprepper.com slash EMP shield, place an order and it goes through, you know, you're going to have an EMP shield. That's right. That's right. All right. Question. Um, the host does it. Oh, I love this one. This was this really gave me some giggles here. The host doesn't seem exceptionally knowledgeable about this topic. And uh, let me just stop there and say. There are a few things I live by in my life, and one of them is never be the smartest guy in the room. Right? That's why Andrew is here tonight. That's why I surround myself with specialists. Okay. I can't know everything or do everything. And so I may not be ex exceptionally knowledgeable in this, but I find people who are, and I bring them to my. Uh, uh, channel and I share their knowledge with you. So uh, yes, I admit I'm not exceptionally knowledgeable, probably um, more than most people, but not by his opinion. Uh, even having a technical class ham license, I looked them up. It's interesting that he looked me up. Uh, but he is probably a good model representing the average American. I'm, I'm assuming he means that average American isn't very smart. That's fine. Uh, I have an EMP shield. My question to him is, do you? Okay. The guest is definitely selling his products. Definitely. Absolutely. If you have something that's going to save someone's life, yes. property, why would you not try to help them get that and promote it? Absolutely. We're here and hoping that you buy an EMP shield to protect your family. Mm -hmm. You can't grow a garden if you don't have seeds. Right. You can't protect your house if you don't have an EMP shield. You're not going to filter water if you don't have a water filter. Right. Yes, we're here bringing you a top quality product, and we hope for your family's benefit that you purchase more than one. Uh, personally, I have two techno, techno, technical degrees, including technical graduate degrees. I also have an extra class amateur license. Um, I... Um, what do you call it when you don't finish college? Oh, I dropped out of college. So this guy is definitely smarter than I am. I have no question about that, uh, that he's, you know, he's got different degrees and he's got an extra class amateur license. That's great. Um, I've got multiple EMP shields in my house. Although the shield product can prevent EMP voltages at the connection point from flowing from that point on, it does not protect the entire circuit if that circuit is also acts as an antenna. Now, we're kind of making a leap here because he says he has two technical degrees and an amateur radio license. 
uh, does not mean he's a specialist in EMP protection or lightning protection. So just because I know how to run a computer doesn't mean I know how to do everything on a computer, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the 100% solution, in my honest opinion, is to have spares in a good Faraday enclosures, and we've suggested that's a good idea. Also note the DOD, Department of Defense, my former employment, now retired, has done EMP testing on many newish autos. About 10% never ran again. A good reason to get an EMP shield on every vehicle. A few stayed running, but the majority stalled but could be restarted. Solar panels are virtually unaffected. Yes, that's true. Some diodes may be damaged depending on the EMP strength. Solar panels, charge controllers, inverters will likely be damaged. Uh, not likely, 100%, they're fried, yes. okay? No question. Uh, let's not diminish the uh, reality here. They're, they're, they're toast. Thus, have a spare on, in a Faraday enclosure. You know, I have uh, an inverter, a spare inverter in a Faraday enclosure. Mm -hmm. It's several thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. An EMP shield is a few hundred dollars. Right. Um, I had that um, investment of several thousand dollars before I learned about EMP Shield. I could have saved myself several thousand dollars. Right. Um, a nuke EMP is the number one strategic offensive during a war, which looks like we're headed into. It's likely to happen someday, somewhere. So it seems like he's kind of diminishing. It's going to happen somewhere, but probably not here. Um, anyway. I love comments like this. They don't offend me. Yeah. Uh, and I think it, you know, someone's expressing maybe their opinion and other people's opinions. Well, what are your thoughts on this? I, I love this question. So um, there's a couple of things he said here that I'll certainly address. So he's talking about flowing from that point on. Um, we talked about this already, but the EMP shield is looking in all directions on the electrical system. So out towards the grid, also inwards towards the house and EMP is occurring simultaneously. So whether it was just your home inducing or the grid or both, it doesn't matter because we're pulling the energy from both directions uh, and we're pulling it faster than the damage is going to occur and um, much, much faster than what the, even the military EMP testing requirements are like a hundred times faster. It's very fast. Now, uh, the, the middle portion of his uh, comment here mentions the EMP testing on vehicles, which was actually done by the U.S. EMP Commission. Uh, I don't remember the date, but it may have been around 2003. It was released a couple weeks before or after 9-11. Um, with all of that being said, it has been publicly recognized by the leaders of and some of the folks of the EMP Commission that they did not do the testing correctly, nor to the appropriate levels. So I, I would even say that having 10% that didn't run again at low levels, uh, but it, that's neither here nor there because there has been other series of tests done on vehicles at White Sands uh, missile testing range that proved the destructiveness of EMPs on vehicles, which people seem, seem to not know quite as much about. Um, I might even find some links and some test results of that and kind of publish those somewhere so more people have access to it. But vehicles, especially modern day vehicles, are, are very, very likely to be destroyed from an EMP. Uh, a super EMP, absolutely too. So now his description of solar panels is actually true. A solar panel is impervious virtually to an EMP, uh, but they also serve as a huge antenna, a huge antenna with lots of feet, hundreds of feet of copper trace running through it. Um, and it's designed to collect energy. And that energy is going to go straight to your inverter or your charge controller, whatever is first in that line. Um, having a spare one is, is very expensive, uh, kind of like David had mentioned. For a couple hundred dollars, you can protect your solar system. It's that simple. Um, you know, we the goal at EMP Shield is to provide military certified levels of protection, but make it affordable and allow you to protect the system that is in operation. So you can use your solar system on a daily basis. And uh, we have thousands, thousands upon thousands of folks with solar systems that are off grid, on grid, grid tied, all kinds of systems that are using it as we speak right now. Um, it, it's a phenomenal uh, peace of mind. It's a, it's, and it's a phenomenal type of protection that absolutely everybody should have, especially when they become aware of the threat of EMP and have countries like Russia and Mr. Putin threatening us. Um, this is something that people really need to look into. As I've 
improved and expanded my solar power system here on my property. We're up to over $90,000 of uh, cost. That is all being protected by right. a few hundred dollars right. of an EMP shield. Mm -hmm. I couldn't think of a smarter thing to do. Uh, when I was addressing the 10% of cars that never ran again, uh, when I was in high school, we had a weatherman come into our class and talk about weather. Mm -hmm. And he said, by the way, uh, when we say there's a 20% chance of weather, you know, of, of rain, what that really means is that there's a 100% chance of rain in 20% of the area. <laughs> and so 80% of the area, they're not, they're not anticipating rain, but there's a but that only but the whole area where it's going to get rain is 20 percent. so if you're in that 20 percent, you get a hundred percent chance of mm -hmm. rain so if you're in that 10 percent of that cars that never start again that's a hundred percent chance that your car is not going to start so it all depends on how you look at it um if i could protect my car and get home safely to my family for a, a couple hundred dollar investment i'm all for that uh, uh karen says here on april 24 2021 our home was hit by a serious lightning. Insert loud boom sound here. I love this. <laughs> she wrote this. And she sent this to you guys. I love that she, she sent this to you. The EMP shield worked exactly as described. The two circuits uh, which the EMP shield were connected uh, to tripped, but the EMP shield took the brunt of it. Hallelujah. I am. Can you tell she's excited? Look at all these oh, yeah. exclamation marks, all caps, everything. I am convinced that if we had not had this unit, our entire house would have been affected. Pursuant to the warranty, we, uh, we are returning the sacrificial unit for replacement. Thank you for waiving the $50 fee. Also, that doesn't happen in every case, so, but this one it did. I don't know the circumstances, but uh, anticipate a $50 fee, uh, which is next to nothing for what you just, right. thousands of dollars of appliances you just protected. Also, my husband, who is an unrestricted licensed electrician would like to know if a sequential relay system is available. I don't know what that means. In case we had a second lightning strike after the first. If so, please contact uh, us to order either another unit or whatever is available. Thank you again. This is amazing product. Uh, what is the process for reselling commercial industrial units for uh, industry? and she gives her company information there. A very excited customer wants to sell them for you so they mm -hmm. can install them for their customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've, um, I don't know if we mentioned this before, we've had, we've had hundreds of, of uh, strikes, hundreds, um, hundreds upon hundreds actually. So a lot of uh, indirect, and then we've got, you know, I'd say roughly around a hundred that are direct lightning strikes or like really close to the house. And then many, many more that are indirect that did the job as well. Um, what It's almost funny, but usually there's an electrician involved, involved, especially after a lightning strike. Almost all of these electricians become affiliates after this. Uh, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. Almost every single one of them, because they're like, this just doesn't happen very often. Like they see the damage from lightning all the time and they're like, okay, I need to get involved in this. You know, this is a- I, I can I can see them saying, I don't know how this worked. Yes. But it worked. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't need to know how, you know, the whole human body works. I just know when it doesn't work and when it does work, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm sure that they, they're not tearing these things apart and cutting them open and trying to figure it out. They're just putting them in and saying, hey, I know this works. This happened on, on uh, right. Karen's house. Right. And she talked about the two different uh, circuits that this was in. There was another a video that I, I saw where a gentleman installed this and it protected not only his side of the house, but his mother's side of the house. And he talked about something about the EMP shield working out to 250 feet. Uh, can you uh, tell me, clarify that for me? I thought I it was pretty you. amazing. Yeah. So it was actually very interesting. Um, I, I, is this the video? This is the video that I said. Right. I, it was okay. on another YouTube channel and I didn't have permission to take it's okay. it. So I didn't. I'll describe yeah. it briefly. So I found out uh, his, his name's Bobby. And they part of the story, if I recall correctly, is they couldn't figure out why both 
they even had an investigation into how were but how is this happening? How was the both sides protected? Um, and then it turns out why was no damage occurred inside the house, basically. And it turns out that you know, because of the EMP shield's distance of protection, which is 250 linear feet, and that means anything that is connected to include a whole nother system in a house, it was able to protect both sides of the duplex. Um, so it's a really neat story. Um, I might go back and watch it because I, I don't remember the exact words that he used, but basically a single EMP shield protected two sides of a duplex and uh, people were baffled. They're like, wait, this is incredible. Like, you know, so. So I'm thinking that they both have their own um, electrical meter, mm -hmm. you know, their own circuit breakers. Mm -hmm. He installed it on his and it protected his mother's uh, home next to his right. and the duplex. That's, mm -hmm. that's a phenomenal story. That's awesome. Right. Yeah, you will be over, uh, you can, you over deliver everything, okay? You, you surpass all the military specs, you over deliver what you promise. Okay, question, what EMP oh. paint help, would an EMP paint help protect a house at all? Yeah, so EMF paint, I, I'm, EMF and EMP are, are two not the same thing. So just for, for people that uh, to be aware of that. Now, I do believe there may be some paints that provide some form of protection. But just remember, the only way to have a, an actual 100% effective Faraday cage is to have a completely enclosed container of the material that is correct. So uh, having these, not EMF paint, but these special EMP protective paints will provide some protection, but the only way to get complete protection is to guarantee that everything inside of that container is 100% sealed. Uh, and I'm not an expert on the paint, so I don't know the, the true effectiveness of it either. So I'd be very careful doing something like this. So EMF paint does dramatically reduce EMPs from like a cell tower coming to your house, that kind of thing, which is completely different than an EMP, electrical magnetic pulse. Right. Um, but with the EMP, even with the EMF uh, paint, you're going to have to put uh, wire mesh over your windows, anything that is not covered in the paint. Like you said, you need to cover everything right. uh, to protect from uh, exterior exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the minimum electronic gear to have in your Faraday cage? And my answer is whatever you want to use after an EMP. Uh, you know, I don't need to have a, a, uh, a CPAP machine in my Faraday cage, but right. somebody may want to absolutely have it in their Faraday cage. Yes. Yeah, I don't have. The, I don't think there is an exact answer. I, I answer. I think it's all situationally dependent. It depends on who you are, what you're looking to do, how many people there are, and, and where you're located. Um, so this is something for you and your family or your group to sit down and discuss, and probably determine what you think is is important to protect. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, I live in Alpine, Utah, and do not even know who to ask to install an EMP shield in my breaker box. Any suggestions? Absolutely. So for, for whoever wrote this comment, give us a call. First, number one, and most importantly, is when you call us, make sure you tell us that you heard about us on LDS Prepper. And that's so that we can make sure you get the discount um, to help you save some money. And then uh, it, what we like to do, and we do this quite a bit, is if you're having trouble finding an electrician, my, my staff will absolutely do everything they can to find you an electrician. Um, they, we, we make phone calls almost every day to electricians to see, and uh, we just let them know it installs just like most type two surge protectors. And it's normally very fast to install. It's like 10 or 15 minutes and uh, we can act, absolutely help you. Your staff calls local electricians. You guys are rock stars. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I'm just speaking as a customer. Mm -hmm who you know who buys from other companies and you guys are just head and shoulders above everybody it's just awesome all right i believe this is our last testimonial uh i live near uh fort lauderdale florida we have experienced vicious lightning storms this past week unfortunately to my shock lightning hit the generator transfer switch for the generator i had bought to give me power during hurricanes people do this a lot They'll have like a whole house generator uh, set up. So because they know the power goes out so that 
So they want to, you know, have electricity. Mm -hmm. But this hit the generator transfer switch. The power of the lightning exploded the EMP shield, but the shield was so fast. And this is what we're talking about between a surge protector and an EMP shield. Mm -hmm. It was so fast, it protected the transfer switch and the generator. I had the generator company come out to double check and make sure the generator was not harmed. We often have hurricanes come to visit and I desperately need, uh, need, need, desperately need it to work if that happens. The good news is that the, the shield did its job and the generator was fine. The EMP customer service team was, has been very helpful and pleasant during the stressful experience. I thank the Lord that I found this company and their products, Judy Scott. Yeah, she was a very nice lady too. Um, you know, and I, I'd say for anybody who wants to kind of see more about these testimonials, I, I think this might be our last one. We've got over 1,500 um, from, from real customers, five-star reviews. Some are four stars, but four and five-star reviews on our website. Um, go take a look. There's thousands and thousands of people that are very pleased with their products. And uh, I'm happy to be able to give them a product that is simply incredible uh, with a technology that did not exist until we invented it. And to also provide them with a customer service team that we're, we're old school. Um, I believe firmly that your company lives and breathes on the customer service that you provide for your customer. And it's, it is critical. And um, I'm striving to be some of the best in the world and hopefully we're, we're getting there. So. Yeah. I, I have my phone number on my uh, emergency preparedness store, LDS prepper store.com. Mm -hmm. And people are surprised when they call that I actually answer. Right. And say, yeah, this is my passion. Yeah. I, yeah I'm, I'm, I get out of bed to answer your phone call. And I'm here to help. How can I help? Uh, and I try to be as good as customer service at EMP Shield. That's my goal. <laughs> okay. Just uh, to remind everybody, uh, enter into the contest. Tell your friends. Share the contest. It, we're giving them away. It's not going to cost you anything. They even pay for the shipping. Right. All right. But you do not have to wait to see if you're a winner. We're gonna have three winners. There are thousands, tens of thousands of people who will see this video and, and tens of thousands of more who, who will uh, be invited from their friends and family to enter the giveaway. Um, so don't hesitate. If you do uh, buy your MP Shield and you are a winner, you can get another one or you can get reimbursed for one of them. Uh, all Andrew and I are, are hoping is that you're one of the people like the other 1,500 who write in and say, I got it before I needed it. And I'm glad that it did. I did. I sleep better at night. I know I'm protected. I don't have to worry about um, my appliances blowing up or having to pay the money to, I mean, what's a refrigerator cost nowadays? A okay, lot. A lot. And that's just one appliance. Mm -hmm. So uh, please take advantage of uh, Andrew's generosity, take advantage of their technology, use their great customer service and get your home, your vehicles, your generators, your radios, your companies protected from an electrical uh, magnetic pulse, from a uh, chronal mass ejection or a lightning strike. And you get that $25,000 guarantee, protection guarantee for you and a great product that you can count on. Any last thoughts, Andrew? No. Uh, is the link going to be in the description box below the video for the giveaway? Uh, uh, yes, I will put that. Okay. Under, as soon as the uh, I'm done here, I will put, add that to the description. Yes. Sure. I just Thank thought it might make it easier for folks. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I really enjoyed uh, having these discussions with you. I th hopefully a lot of people learned. Uh, quite a bit about EMP and I'm really excited to um, to give these away. I mean, seriously, it's it's like one of the best things that I get to do. I do this usually once a quarter. So every three months and uh, I always look forward to it. So it's going to be good. Well, we appreciate your generosity. Glad we're able to inform and help other people get prepared and so they can uh, rest easy. And like the, the one testimony says, said, there's so many other things to worry about. This is one thing I don't have to worry about any longer. Right. Uh, so thanks everybody for joining us on the call tonight. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Um, thank you, Andrew, for taking your evening. I know it's uh, quite er later at your, your location than it is here at mine. 
So uh, we'll release you to go back to your family. Uh, this is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared and you have an EMP shield installed in your home, you shall not fear. Everybody have a good evening. Okay, boy, that was almost.